You might be a genius, but never figured it out until now. Geniuses around the world have displayed different characteristics or are able to pass certain exams. Maybe their way of thinking is just slightly different from the rest of the world, which has allowed them to see things from different perspectives. From staying up late at night to the size of your forehead, here are things that prove you're actually a genius. First of all, we like to state that you're all geniuses if you're subscribed to American Eye, been leaving us great comments, and been liking our videos. But to what degree of a genius are you? Thank you Link Weber, for dropping us this line. Let us know what other characteristics we didn't mention on this list and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 11. Pass a Mensa Test The group known as Mensa is made up of members who might not consider themselves to be geniuses, but they're within the top 2 percentile of scores taken on IQ tests. Founded in 1946 in England, it's an active club for those who can get in. This group is not politically affiliated and have members in 100 different countries around the world. They meet together online or in person to discuss various topics they find to be important. The group doesn't use IQ scores to decide if you can join or not, it's mostly from the tests they have set up. It doesn't just measure the amount of book knowledge you're able to memorize, but also your creativity and cognitive aptitude. The test includes pictures, some mathematical problems, crossword puzzles, and seeing how well you can pick up on patterns. You need to be able to read between the lines in order to be a part of the Smart Kid Club. If you don't pass the test, don't worry. There are still other signs that might prove you're a genius. Hopefully this isn't just a glorified nerds club. Number 10. Solve a Rubik's Cube This legendary puzzle was designed to certainly confuse people and it's quite a difficult task. While most people out there probably have never tried it or gave up on it quickly, a recent survey seemed to show that less than 1% of the population has successfully solved this. It was intentionally created to be rather impossible to solve, and even the person who made the Rubik's Cube took over a month to figure it out. This photo here shows George W. Bush trying to solve it, and our guess is he probably didn't make the 1% club. If you can't do anything else besides solve Rubik's Cubes, you'd have some problems, but at least you'd be smart enough to solve one. Number 9. Use both your hands So there's about 90% of us who are right-handed, 9% who are left-handed, and about 1% of people who are ambidextrous. This means they can use both hands equally for any given task. You'd be surprised to learn that some of the most intelligent artists and scientists were ambidextrous and have very symmetrical brains. Very little is known about what makes people ambidextrous in the first place. Research seems to show that having a dominant hand is linked with different hemispheres in our brain, so this would lead to you believing that ambidextrous people use both sides of their brain effectively and neither hemisphere is dominant. In one study, it showed that greater numbers of ambidextrous students scored higher on IQ tests. In this case, 48% were ambidextrous. Keep in mind, they only make up 1% of the population. Could there be something about the ability to control both sides of our body equally that makes someone smarter? Who knows? It's very possible. Number 8. Insomniacs Ever think people who stay up late were just a little bit weird? Well, it turns out they could be genetic mutants with a superpower of not needing much sleep. These people don't get tired at the normal time and can possess the power to sleep only a few hours and feel completely fine. Although it's only been recorded in a few cases, scientists are beginning to believe that the possibility of a shorter sleep mutated gene which could affect less than 1% of the human species. Historical figures like Napoleon Bonaparte, Leonardo da Vinci, and Margaret Thatcher have all reported only needing 4 hours of sleep or less. There's no way of knowing if they had this mutation, but more research on this gene is needed. If you spend all night watching American Eye videos, you really could be a genius. Number 7. Being Messy if anyone ever tells you you're messy, tell them no, you're just scatterminded, and it's a common trait of geniuses, in case they didn't know. Be sure you have this photo with you handy, in case they don't believe you. This definitely helps give you an excuse not to clean things. We imagine there was so much going on inside Einstein's head that he needed his notes scattered just about everywhere. In fact, Einstein was notorious for having an extremely messy workplace. Scientists are looking into the science behind messiness, and some are beginning to believe that their brains can actually still focus in pure chaos and handle the stimuli of messy environments. Still in different researchers, it's shown that people behind the messiness aren't messy because they're lazy. Some are beginning to believe that their brains can still focus in pure chaos and handle the stimuli of messy environments, which makes them slightly more intelligent. Maybe the genius mind finds organization in complete disarray, and that's why your room is messy. Number 6. Large Forehead If you just told someone that they don't have a forehead, but actually a five head because it's so large, maybe you should stop making fun of that genius. 
Ladies, don't hide them behind your bangs and show off your smarts. Even aliens are portrayed as having larger heads. Parts of your brain, such as your cerebral cortex, are found on the front of your brain. These parts are essentially what makes us humans and not mindless zombies walking around. It functions as the main workhouse for things such as planning, organizing, problem solving, behavior, and emotions. Psychologists have noticed that if something goes wrong in this part of the brain, it can cause more symptoms than anywhere else in the brain. Researchers in Scotland and the University of Zurich have done research that would prove that humans with larger heads have larger cerebral cortices, thus making them smarter than other humans in a sense. It's a controversial topic, but it seems to appear as though size does matter even for different species of animals. Smart animals such as chimpanzees, gorillas, whales, and even dolphins all have big heads. Number 5. Being Open-Minded Do you think geniuses got to where they are by thinking inside the box? No. They don't feel closed off just to one theory and are willing to accept other people's viewpoints as a possibility. Nothing is completely wrong until proven elsewise. Someone who is closed-minded may not feel as though new information is worth learning and won't take the time because it doesn't support their original beliefs. If you want to be a genius, you have to accept the fact that there is a lot you don't know. You also have to be willing to hear what others have to say. If others have put a lot of time and energy researching a certain viewpoint or theory, geniuses are ready to critique out and point out flaws in what people are saying instead of putting in earplugs and running away from them. This person would constantly be curious of finding out new information and care more about the truth than their personal beliefs. Number 4. If curiosity gets the best of you Do you ever remember asking a ton of questions when you were younger about the most random subjects? And now, in modern times, you felt literally the urge to know it all and always found yourself searching questions on Google. This would tend to meet the profile of a genius. Einstein once quoted that he has no special talents and he's just actually passionately curious which fuels his drive for knowledge. If you're not fascinated with learning new things on a daily basis, then you might not be a genius. People such as Nikola Tesla were always curious about creating different forms of energy that could be utilized cleanly and freely. Leonardo da Vinci was fascinated by several different subjects such as anatomy, architecture, painting, sculpting, geology, astronomy, and the list goes on. If you're a genius, you're normally talented in many different subjects because you're willing to learn them all. Number 3. If you're funny it takes a little bit of brain power to be funny, and having witty jokes could be a sign of higher intelligence. Stand-up comedians secretly possess higher IQs at around 138 for males and 126 for females. This is only slightly below the genius scores, and they'd be accepted in the Mensa. Comedy is an art form, and making references including punchlines and coming up with stories that people find to be humorous is a skill that comes easier to some than others. Studies have also been done at the University of Vienna, which shows that people who have a dark sense of humor were typically better educated and showed signs of strong mental health. They also had a better positive outlook on life as opposed to people who were offended by every little remark that wasn't 100% politically correct. Number 2. If you drink a lot of water If you're not naturally born a genius, don't worry, there are some ways to improve your diet which can improve your brain function. According to the Frontiers in Human Neuroscience Journal, your brain needs plenty of water in order to run properly. Evidence would suggest that dehydration negatively affects cognitive performance. Even just a 1% body weight loss of water weight can result in slower reaction times and performance in memory-related tasks. Things such as omega fatty acids can also improve your memory. Other brain functions such as alertness and concentration can get worse as your mind doesn't receive a quality glass of water. Ingesting anywhere from 8 to 10 cups of water per day can seriously improve cognitive performance by as much as 30%. So consider that before taking your Mensa test. And number 1. Talking to yourself Are you talking to yourself because your brain just simply has too powerful of a voice to not be heard? You may either be completely mad, completely genius, or both. There's no need to be too worried that you're not a genius with this one. Psychologists have concluded that people who do talk to themselves are usually in a better mood, have better memories, and can focus better on various projects. Some people just want to hear themselves talk because it's better than complete silence, or if they come up with a genius idea, they have to have a way to put it in words. Negative self-talk can have the opposite effect, and if you do talk to someone who's not really there, you might need help. But it's been shown that talking to yourself in a positive manner can not only cheer you up, but also help you perform in upcoming tasks more efficiently. So are you guys a genius? Let us know in the comment section, and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. So what do you guys think of that video? Let us know in the comment section, and be sure to subscribe for new videos every day.